Well, the NSA spying flap extends to the contents of U.S. phone calls. This is reported by CNET, and this is a quote from Representative Gerald Nadler, New York Democrat. He disclosed on Thursday that during a secret briefing to members of Congress, he was told that the contents of a phone call could be accessed, quote, simply based on an analyst deciding that. Basically the same thing Snowden is saying. If the NSA wants to listen to the phone, an analyst decision is sufficient without any other legal authorization required, Nadler said he learned. I was rather startled, he said. He's an attorney and a congressman who serves on the House Judiciary Committee. Now, that secret briefing was on Tuesday. And there was also, as reported last week, there was also another rep, uh, Representative Loretta Sanchez, a California Democrat. And she was also at that meeting on Tuesday, and she was astounded. This is her quote. She said, I think it's broader than most people even realize, she said, of the contents of the secret briefing. And I think that's, in one way, what astounded most of us, too. In other words, what they are getting in these briefings is the idea that everybody is being surveilled. And it's not being limited to metadata. It is the actual content of your communications that they are analyzing, that they are storing for further data mining in the future. Now, Obama likes to say that it's nothing to worry about, that it's just metadata. Well, metadata isn't a term that was in the Constitution. It talks about all your personal papers and your property and your privacy. It talks about having a warrant, which means that the government has to have a reason to suspect that you are a criminal, a bad actor, that you're doing something wrong. They have to be specific in front of a judge about what they think you're doing, where they want to look, when they want to look. That's when they get a warrant from the judge. That's the way it works in a free society. That's the way it works in a constitutional society. That is not what is happening now. And we see that congressmen are being told this in private. Back in March, Ron Wyden was told by James Clapper that they were not looking at any data. And he knew at the time that Clapper was lying. Now we all know that Clapper was lying, lying under oath, committing perjury, lying to Congress. The National Security Director for Obama, I believe it's his title, something to that effect. But he's being defended and he's being retained by the Obama administration. He has not been taken out of his office. He has not been criminally prosecuted. We need to understand from congressmen where they stand. Unfortunately, the Senate members had their briefing on Friday and most of them chose to go home for the weekend instead. They simply don't care. And the question is, do you care? Do you care enough to contact them, to hold their feet to the fire, to say to them, either you are going to prosecute these criminal lying government officials, or you are an accessory to the fact, and we need to get rid of you as well. That's what they need to hear from all of us. Now, the next NSA spying shoot a drop is going to be pre-crime artificial intelligence, according to an article on InfoWars from Washington's blog. Now, this says, in 2008, Christopher Ketchum revealed that a governmental unit operating in secret and with no oversight whatsoever is gathering massive amounts of data on every American and running artificial intelligence software to predict each American's behavior, including, quote, what the target will do, where the target will go, who it will turn to for help. Okay, who are the targets? What kind of Americans? Well, dissidents activists of various stripes, political and tax protesters, lawyers and professors, publishers, journalists, gun owners, illegal aliens, foreign nationals, a great many other harmless average people. Now in February this year, the Sydney Morning Herald reporter Ryan Gallagher wrote that Raytheon had secretly developed software capable of tracking people's movement and predicting future behavior by mining the data from social networking websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Foursquare. The software is called RIOT, which stands for Rapid Information Overlay Technology. Now, <laughs> they really kind of, whenever you look at these acronyms, they never really make that much sense. Really, what they want to do is they want to come up with a word that kind of represents what they're interested in. And what they're interested in here, I think, when they talk about, a, when they name this program RIOT, and they want to follow people, that's exactly what they're concerned about. They're concerned about people finding out what they're doing, getting angry about it, and writing, but that's okay. I don't guess they've got anything to worry about because we won't even protest what they are doing to us right now, will we? Now, what they're doing 
with these programs, with these corporate programs. And this is what CISPA was all about in its latest incarnation from Mike Rogers, is that they're using third party, uh, turning over, third parties turning over your information voluntarily. Companies like Microsoft, like Google, they're turning over that information voluntarily. And the legal loophole that they claim that they have is that if they were to go in and get that information directly from you, they say they would need a warrant. But if you give that information to a third party, that third party can voluntarily turn that information over to them. Now, of course, it's a violation of their privacy agreements with you, and they have some liability in that area. However, that's the purpose of CISPA. CISPA was to remove that liability so that these organizations, these third party uh, independent companies like Facebook, Google, could turn that information over to the government and there would be nothing you could do about it, even though they were lying completely on their terms of service agreement. But let's look at new revelations about the NSA PRISM program's first volunteer, according to their leaked slides, and that's Microsoft. If you remember, in 2007, Microsoft supposedly was the first company to join the PRISM program. And now we learn in popular science that the U.S. government is using early knowledge of Microsoft bugs to spy on us. Microsoft software is both widely used and infamous for its bugs. Just this week, Microsoft released a patch designed to cover an image file exploit that let hackers look at special information. Now, this was disclosed in May that there's an exploit in Microsoft Office that could give an attacker a foot in the door to gain full access to the attack computer. Sometimes major software is released with day zero bugs. In other words, bugs from the when they very release it, like, like Internet Explorer 8 or Windows 8 or every version of Windows ever. And before Microsoft releases a public patch of a software bug, and this is the key, it passes along that information to U.S. intelligence agencies, say two sources familiar with the program. So what happens is, as this article is pointing out, once they find a bug, then they allow the U.S. intelligence agencies to have a window of time where they can exploit that bug. Now, it sounds very much like what Aaron Schwartz was saying. Remember in the CISPA debates, Aaron Schwartz was saying that the U.S. government is the source of nearly every cyber attack on the planet, and they fund and research all of this. So they're actually funding people to find exploits. And it turns out, apparently, that in the case of Microsoft, if they're not deliberately putting these bugs in the Microsoft operating system, at least Microsoft is waiting quite a while before they report it, before they fix it for the public. And during that time, intelligence services can use that information to spy on you. Now, Wired Magazine has an article entitled, These Guys Want to Hack Your Home and You Should Let Them. No, you shouldn't. But in this article, I say the dream of an automated home full of connected appliances, also known as the Internet of Things, isn't the vaporware that it once was. We've been talking about that for a while. Several consumer devices already connect to the web, and hardware hackers have been building tools. This can require more than a little computer know-how, but IFTTT, that's the name of their program, is changing that by letting you integrate various web services and devices without having to write code. We always had the idea that IFTTT could be the world's simplest programming language, says company CEO Lyndon Tibbetts. But we don't call it that because people would have a reaction to the word programming. Well, again, this goes back to what we reported on about a year ago when Petraeus announced that they were going to be using appliances to spy on you. As crazy as that sounded, this is now what they're looking at, and that is to offer you the opportunity to pay for your own surveillance devices. They will allow you to do a little bit of programming, but be aware that on the back end, there's going to be a lot of programming being done by someone else to spy on you, to watch everything that you do, just as we see with the latest Microsoft gaming release. And you might think that Petraeus uh, might want to rethink this, but evidently, no, he was at Bilderberg with Henry Kissinger, and the subject was still big data, one of the major subjects that they were talking about, if we can believe their released agenda. Well, that brings us to, to our quote of the day, and it's from Samuel Adams, and he says, Our contest is not only whether we ourselves shall be free, 
but whether there shall be left to mankind an asylum on earth for civil and religious liberty. Well, as Sam Adams was saying, the question is whether or not there's going to be any asylum for liberty on earth. And it looks like, as the U.S. government has its way, there isn't. Because they want to look at everyone on the planet's information. No one will have any privacy. And without privacy, there can be no liberty either. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.